Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man whose wife slept with someone else when they went on a boat cruise together. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. Both my wife and I are in our second marriages. We're in our mid-40s and our first marriages obviously just didn't work out. She got married young to her college sweetheart, but he ended up revealing his true colors a few years into marriage, and he was verbally abusive and a bit of a cheat. My ex-wife and I, on the other hand, got married in our late 20s and honestly just drifted apart. We found that we were no longer compatible and our divorce was fairly amicable. We met through mutual friends about six years ago and instantly hit it off. We had a lot to bond over, divorce, hobbies, traveling, lack of children, etc. We started dating shortly after and then decided to get married about two years into our relationship. Our wedding was very small and intimate, with less than 40 guests. We had a ceremony and reception. It was perfect. However, we never went on a honeymoon. I honestly don't know why. We could have afforded it. I suppose at the time we just didn't prioritize it and we travel frequently as it is. We had been approaching our four-year wedding anniversary and my wife decided that she wants a honeymoon-esque trip. Typically, we are busybodies on vacation. We try to visit every site possible. This time, she wanted to relax, not have to think so much, and it sounded good to me. So we planned a nice, relaxing, more adult cruise. It was a week long, with a few full days at sea and a few full days in Bermuda. We were looking forward to our first relaxing trip. We have massages planned for our sea days, brought books with plans to relax by the pool, and a few low-key excursions on the island to make sure we'd still have time to relax on the beach. We boarded the ship and were already in full chill mode. However, once we left the port, I found myself getting rather seasick. I was not expecting this to happen, but I guess the water was very choppy. I tried to suck it up and I ended up making it through the night. We enjoyed a show and hung out at one of the cocktail bars. The second day was brutal. We were at sea for the entire day and I did not prepare myself with anything to alleviate the motion sickness. I made it through breakfast somehow and attempted to relax by the pool with my wife, but it was not working out for me. I decided to head back to our cabin and try to sleep off my sickness to recover in time for our dinner reservation. Thankfully I did feel better after a few hours and made it through dinner and a show, but that did not last long and I was afraid I was not going to make it to the party my wife wanted to attend. I knew I had to go to bed or I was not going to be able to enjoy Bermuda the next day. My wife was very upset by this and did not want to go to bed, but she seemed to understand. She was going to accompany me, but I assured her it was okay if she wanted to attend the party. I didn't blame her. I wanted to go as well. At this point, it was probably about 9.30pm, so I was expecting her to return to our room around midnight or so. She returned closer to 1am, but I didn't think much of it. Parties run late. I woke up feeling much better and we were able to enjoy our first full day in Bermuda. We had one excursion planned and spent the afternoon on the beach. It was great. However, our vacation took a turn for the worse the following morning. We didn't have too much planned for the day, just intended for it to be a relaxing beach day. That said, we slept in a little bit and made our way to the breakfast buffet, in no rush at all. I grabbed my breakfast and made my way to a table to wait for my wife. I noticed her being stopped on her way over to me, but a man who was probably in his mid-30s. It was clear the two had interacted before, and from what I witnessed alone, definitely in a manner that was more than just a friendship. He was clearly very happy to see her, hoped to see her again, and tried to kiss her. I'm very confident that if I hadn't been within eyesight, she would have kissed him back. I asked her what the hell that was about when she finally joined me at the table. She tried to tell me he was just someone she had run into the other night and spoke to him for only a few minutes. She could tell I wasn't buying it and got a little flustered. I pressed the issue further until she finally admitted the truth. She had met him at the party and was dancing and drinking. One thing led to another and she found herself in his cabin having sex with him. She had the audacity to have sex with another man and then crawl into bed next to me and kiss me goodnight. I was in a sense of disbelief especially knowing the damage her ex-husband did to her by cheating. I had no interest in being around her, but of course we were stuck together for four more days on a cruise ship. I spent the last half of our trip avoiding her like the plague, with the exception of sleeping. 
although you better believe she was sleeping on the couch and not in bed with me. It was terrible. Anyway, I survived my terrible honeymoon and kicked my wife out first thing. I let her pack some bags and she's staying with her mom in a nearby city. I've already made contact with a divorce lawyer. I already know what I'm doing in that area, ha. Huh? I'm dealing with the whole situation as best as I possibly can, but it's difficult. However, I know I will survive. Perhaps I should get a dog or cat instead of a girlfriend next time. I'm sorry this happened to your marriage, OP, especially during your honeymoon. The fact that your soon-to-be ex-wife did to you exactly what her ex-husband did to her is awful. I would think if anyone were to know how much infidelity hurts, it would be her, but I guess not. You're doing the right thing by divorcing her. I hope if you do engage in this love business again, your lover will be as loyal to you as you are to them. Story 2 So my ex-wife, 27, and I, 27, started dating when we were 18. That was 9 years ago. We were just about to come up on our third year wedding anniversary. Back in March, we got into an argument. She told me she was unhappy and confused and didn't know what she wanted in life and etc etc. She needed space to figure things out. I tried to give her some space. That next week, she spent every night that week out with friends from her new job. I barely saw her. I confronted her about this. She got defensive and said I wasn't giving her the space she needed. It all came to a head one night when she went to a movie with some friends. Movie should have been over by midnight. She got home at 2. Said they all went for drinks after and just got caught up talking. I felt sick to my stomach. Something was wrong. I confronted her the next day. She confessed that she had made out with a coworker. I asked her flat out and she assured me that that was as far as it went, nothing else. I believed her because I'm an effing moron, but I was upset and hurt. So I spent a few days with my parents to clear my head. Came home on St. Patty's Day. We talked. She had a laundry list of problems with me in the relationship. I agreed with lots of what she said. She felt like she needed to leave. I convinced her to try a separation but not a divorce. She agreed and we had some ground rules. I work on my stuff, she works on hers. We don't date other people, we remain faithful. Q training montage. I did everything I could have. Read half a dozen books, googled everything under the sun, started going to therapy to work out my issues. We kept in contact, chatted and laughed. Things felt like they were getting better. We started talking about marriage counseling together and possibly working it out. We met up the other day to talk some stuff out. She had something to tell me. Turns out she lied before. No shit. Things went further than making out. She effed a coworker. Said I needed to know that because if I was going to forgive her, I needed to know the truth. I took that about as well as you figure I did. Spent this weekend just destroyed. I told her I needed to meet her today. Said that I can forgive her for a one-time mistake. I can work through this. She then told me that it wasn't a one-time thing. In fact, during the separation, she's been seeing and sleeping with the same guy. She told me that I drove her to this. So, we're done. I can't be with someone who not only doesn't respect me, but continues to lie over and over. I know that. I love her, yes, but I love who she was. She changed over the past little bit. I want to be with the woman I married, and this is certainly not her but I'm scared to death. I haven't been single since I've been an effing teenager. Up until a few months ago, I thought I had everything perfect. I'm afraid I'll never find anyone who gets me like she did, or used to, rather. Divorced people have read it. Will it get better? Does the fear stop? Can you find someone else? I had always figured this was the person I was going to spend the rest of my life with. How do you even go on after all your hopes and dreams go up in smoke? OP, right now there's not much that can be said that will make you feel much better. You'll have so much pain to work through that. There is a light in the tunnel, but at this point, it'll be very hard to see. Your vision is focused on the train that just left. It sounds like you have a pretty good head on your shoulders, acknowledging your faults and starting to work on resolving a few issues. Think about starting a workout regime. It'll also help boost your confidence a bit for whenever you decide to date again. It may also help as a distraction. Many people have found their second marriage to be stronger due to awareness of the mistakes they made in the last one. Learn from your mistakes and take that knowledge eventually forward with your next relationships. Good luck, OP. Now for some comments. It does get better. 
Life changes in amazing and unexpected ways if you let it. Something that has always helped me to get over hang-ups in life is exercising and staying healthy. It also helps to stay active in things you truly enjoy. Work on your hobbies or join a group that caters to a main interest of yours. Improving in areas you really enjoy will make you happier and will give you new opportunities to lead you to better things. Edit. I forgot to mention, you will be angry, sad, and scared for a while. But with time, those negative feelings fade as long as you find healthy outlets for them. Jesus effing Christ, I'm going through almost this exact same thing right now. I'm sorry for you, man. WTF happened to our wives and why didn't they have the balls to break it off when they stopped loving us? As long as you don't have anything too effed up with you, you should be able to find someone else who gets you again. I think a big part of getting someone is just being around them. You learn all their jokes. You know all their trivia facts and can reference stuff from your history. I'm absolutely sure if you don't have something that really cripples your chances in the market that you'll find someone that gets you. My wife got bored with me and slept with strangers while I was still thinking everything would be okay. She was my whole world at the time, even though in retrospect I think she was never good for me. That was a year ago. Here's some advice I wish someone had given me shortly after my divorce, rather than telling me the exact opposite. You're in mourning. Don't try to replace her for a while. Don't date. You're not ready. If my mom died and someone told me to just hang out with another old woman for a bit and I would feel better, I would laugh at them. You're in almost the same spot. Try to treat it like it. You need time to heal, so take the time to heal and learn to be independent again. Once you're happy, then you know you're ready to date again.